didn't see that coming. Can't say I'm surprised. Now, at the time of this video, I didn't actually know whether or not the Marvels was going to do well, but I had a very sneaking suspicion that it was going to flop. You know, just based on the trajectory of all the Marvel movies and how downhill they've been going, I really wasn't even interested in seeing this movie. And here's why. Before I go into saying why, I know some people are going to be all like, ah, who are you to speak? But I do think it's important to also hear from people who chose not to go see a film and why when they saw the trailer that turned them off to it. I already mentioned some of this in another video, but one of the first things that turned me off to it, I know. <laughs> no surprise here. Captain Marvel. Marvel usually does a great job of introducing characters that you're not familiar with, but after watching this movie, she was so freaking boring that it's literally impossible for me to feel anything for the character. It's like watching paint dry, except I've heard you can get high off of paint. Watching her act just makes you feel like you're freaking dying. Oh god, I wanna die. She is so boring, so bland and forgettable that I entirely forgot that she was in the movie Skull Island, which is a movie I love. Like, my mind just completely erased her character. She was just, oh, there was a girl there and it was her? I didn't know that. And it's very unfortunate because when I watched her in the room, which was my first introduction to this character, she gave an amazing performance. I mean, it wasn't like, you know, Leonardo DiCaprio levels, but look at her. Look at how she emotes. She's like, she really sold that role. So when I saw this person and when Captain Marvel came out and all these other movies came out with her in it, I was really perplexed. I thought this might've been her twin sister or somebody else that looks eerily like her, but I'm shocked that it's the same person. What happened between this time and the later movies that she starred in? Anyway, Captain Marvel also doesn't seem to have any growth. When her movie came out, she was perfect from the get-go. Everything else was everybody else's fault. So you have this super-powered character that is basically on par with Superman, who's full of herself, and never has any growth or relatability. Ergo, making her quite forgettable and insufferable. Then based on the trailer, we have this other character that I've never seen before because I'm not paying for Disney Plus to go watch this and I'm not using my time either because I'm not interested in this character. I'm just not. Monica Rambeau, I watched from WandaVision and it's not like her character was that groundbreaking for me to remember her or desire to see her in a solo film. She and Captain Marvel together are freaking boring. And I also cover this in another video where the scene from WandaVision comes up and it didn't shine Monica in the greatest light because she's basically excusing a psychopath and please for the love of god i don't want people coming in the comments and like well how are they supposed to hold one division accountable the writers the writers can do that and if that were the case then everybody would be saying that about thanos as well so because somebody is superpower we're supposed to just not talk to them or acknowledge or have them acknowledge the wrong that they've done the hell they'll never know what you sacrificed for them yeah these people they, they just got brainwashed for months, and I guess that's okay. So in many ways, Wanda was actually a bigger villain than this woman who's the actual villain. And Monica basically kisses her ass and tells her, it's okay, you sacrificed a lot for them. Could be she wasn't talking about the kids, she could have been talking about the events of like the Avengers and the Affinity War and whatever, but given that the subject matter was her directly losing the children, I don't know, kind of felt like that's what she was talking about. Then you have this annoying ass character that nobody really knows. And here's the thing, this is what I've talked about before. It is so annoying when Marvel and Disney think that it is a lucrative idea or venture to place main storylines from the movies in their TV shows. Are you insane? Oh my God, I don't know what you're doing. So people who don't watch TV shows or who have not subscribed to the TV shows or can't afford it, watch the sequel to a movie and they're completely confused because many of them don't even know that they should have watched these stupid ass waste of time TV shows before watching a movie that's supposed to be a sequel to another movie. In what world did they think it was a good idea to strong arm people into doing that, but then don't market it so people know that they're supposed to be strong armed into doing so? I get it, these movies were all already made, so maybe they couldn't course correct in time, but Lord have mercy. That is one of the reasons I didn't watch, because I don't care about Kamala Khan, I don't know who she is, and if you're like, I have to watch Miss Marvel to get it, I don't want to. Let the stories in the movies stay in the movies. If you want to add a little bit more exposition in the TV shows, so we can get a bit more detail, do that. But don't require the audience to have to be subscribed to Disney Plus streaming service, which is like 15 bucks for them to get the full experience, alongside all the other streaming services they have, in the middle of a godforsaken recession. Save your money! And they're not even reasonable. It's not like it's one show that you have to watch. It's like three different shows. Three! That's just that right. That's messed up. 
And you know when you've pissed the pot when Marvel fans are not even interested in seeing your movie. At this point, I'm even surprised that the articles are talking about this. Articles are saying stuff like, the Marvel machine has been one of the most unstoppable forces in box office history. Now, though, that aura of invincibility is showing signs of wear and tear. The superhero factory hit a new low with the weekend launch of the Marvels, which opened with just 47 million, according to studio estimates, Sunday. The Marvels movie debuted with more than 100 million less than Captain Marvel opened with, something no sequel has ever done before. And the only reason I would argue that Captain Marvel even did as well as it did is because it was in between these two huge movies and bridged a gap between them. The marketing claiming that you should see Captain Marvel to understand Endgame in the movies after. So they kind of tricked them there. And it also had characters that people were familiar with and would rather see, like Nick Fury. I know everyone's acting like on its own it was a great movie. It wasn't. It wasn't a horrible movie, but it wasn't that great either. How do I look? like a fucking idiot. The article also states a quote saying, over the last three and a half years, the growth of the genre has stopped. Either way, something is shifting for superheroes. The box office crown this year appears assured to go to Barbie, which came out with 1.4 billion worldwide for Warner Brothers. And we know it's not a superhero thing because Guardians of the Galaxy 3 did just fine. Across the Spider-Verse did just fine. It's not that people don't wanna see superhero stuff anymore. It's that they're sick and tired of seeing Marvel's quality of superhero films that they're putting out and their shows. But then you have have shows like Loki that come out of the woodwork and just expose the hidden remnants of creativity and quality that Marvel obviously still has. I did a review of Loki, you guys should go check that out, but go check out everybody else because right around the time the season two for Loki dropped and the finale came out, everybody was talking about it. Everybody, most people were praising this show. Even people who had given up on Disney were praising it. And you know what? Someone said something to me and they were very irate and upset that I would be giving Disney or Marvel at this point high acclaim. But the thing is, if we want them to make good quality stuff, why not reward them and be honest about how we feel about something when they actually do? If we're upset because they're putting out low quality stuff, and then we're upset when they finally do put out good quality stuff, then what are we really asking from them? At that point, you're just sorry, being a fucking asshole. When something is good, it's just good. And this was highly entertaining. I'm telling you, Loki season two, especially the finale, managed to reignite my curiosity about where the Marvel story is headed. It's the first Marvel content in a long time, a very, very long time, that has captured my interest, particularly in the narrative direction direction for Loki himself. I'm intrigued to see how Loki's actions in season two will shape the world moving forward of the MCU. Loki season two kind of puts me in mind of a flickering ember in an ash field of a once vibrant forest, reminding the world that it's still in there. The core of creativity that we know Marvel once had is still in there. And it needs people with actual talent and who are serious and passionate about the franchises to bring it forth and help it reemerge. It's also going to take some time to build the trust of the fans again. You can't have one successful thing that a lot of people haven't watched, but more people are starting to watch now because of all the reviews that are coming out, and then follow it up with something stupid and unnecessary. Marvel is the one that decided that they wanted everything to interact and be intertwined, and that's fine, but you have to do it the way you were doing it before. Audiences don't like to be insulted, and they don't like to be strong armed. And the Marvel movie was just another example of that. Introduce the characters in the movies. Don't take a character off screen in a show and then introduce them to a movie audience and then write the movie in a way that makes the movie audience confused because obviously it feels like this character was introduced somewhere else and they're just arriving in the middle of this story not knowing what the hell is going on. Like what they did with Multiverse of Madness with Doctor Strange and Wanda. Last thing people knew, Wanda was a good guy. Next thing they know, she's absolutely unhinged and then become even more confused at the reason behind why she is not having had any crumbs of evidence as to why that was before unless they were lucky enough to have watched the show those sideshows again like i said most people don't want to waste money paying for a subscription and watching it's one thing if people want to support you for your content and it's another thing for you to freaking trick them or in a roundabout way force them to watch your show because you know it sucks one division was actually good in my opinion for the most part. But I'm just saying, even if the Marvel's movie were to do very well, I still think that Marvel has a long way to go in regards to winning back the trust and loyalty of their fans and the people they want to watch their movies. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ulturi. You ask, we answer.